The September 15th Apple event is over. The wreckage, the bodies of everyone, of everybody who just insisted there absolutely, positively had to be an iPhone. Apple just wouldn't do a September event without an iPhone. Apple Watch and iPad. They've been smote. Their ruin is just scattered across the internet side. Apple Watch and iPad. But what remains to be done is the reckoning, the rumor reckoning, going through all the reports and seeing who was right and who was wrong, who moved up on the tier list and who's been dragged back down. Were there any catastrophes and were there any redemptions? And what is going on with this new rumor raid boss who has entered the arena? Because we have the iPhone 12 event coming up. The all encompassing, all important, mother of all Apple events still coming up and we need to know who to trust and just who to ignore. So we're gonna go through all of it, update all of it, and we're gonna do it right now. Sponsored by Brilliant. It was a bit of a week. I ended up putting out eight videos last week. I think five or six of them just in the last couple of days. And I know no human being could possibly see them all from the unboxings to the explainers to the hands-on. So I'm gonna link all of them in the description and there's a ton more coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss any of them. Now, just to preface this, I'm gonna focus on the legitimate reporters who have records, not all of the Twitter accounts that we've seen sort of pop up over the last few weeks, all the kids chasing clout, just sort of spewing out random facts. I'm not gonna bully them. I'm not gonna make fun of them. I just don't believe in rewarding negative attention seeking with attention. I'm also not gonna get into the controversy, the brand new rumors about AirPod Studio and AirTags that may have resulted uh, you know, tragically in uh, several employees losing their jobs. And we can argue about whether they knew what they were doing when they did it versus being enabled to do those sorts of things. But I have a brand new podcast with Georgia Dow launching this week where it's just much longer format and much easier to deal with these things. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I also wanna say upfront that I don't know how heavily we should weigh some of the rumors going into this event because it was widely known inside the industry it would be Apple Watch and iPad with no iPhone, like widely known. So I think anybody just predicting those three things, Apple Watch and iPad, and no iPhone really shouldn't count at this point. I know a lot of people just disbelieved, like classic Dungeons and Dragons, disbelieve, disbelieve. But that was, I don't wanna say a known fact, but it was the closest you could get to an unpublished press release at this point. So, I, but I'm going with the, I'm going with the rankings that I got in front of me. So first up, we have Mark Gurman. And again, I think it's fair to make this Mark Gurman and Debbie Wu because they share a byline in most of the reports these days. And Apple Track lists them as going from 86.9% to 87.7%. So a slight bump over 342 rumors. And again, that would leave them as a solid, solid A tier but I still maintain because they do so many rumors and Mark especially has been doing this so long that really should be S tier just because so much out there, so much on the record, uh, so much accomplished. The only thing that he was dinged for was saying the Apple Watch SE would replace the Apple Watch 3. And honestly, Bloomberg's reports are so biz pub format. They, they feel like they're so heavily edited that they remain sort of nebulous to me and I can't often tell what is the nugget of news and what is the eight paragraphs of extra stuff filling them out. So I don't know if that's true or not, but if you have an opinion on it, let me know in the comments. Nine to five Mac went from 75.1% to 77% accurate, over 183 rumors. So they are still in the B tier and they were dinged for iCloud watch face albums and some AR stuff that I honestly think they didn't get wrong or at least they haven't gotten wrong yet, but applies to devices and features that Apple simply hasn't announced yet. Depending how the next month or so plays out, I think that stuff is worth revisiting. John Prosser, who had a setback, a whole tier uh, step down last time because 
he claimed that the Apple Watch and iPad would be announced on the day that the event was actually announced has bounded back from 67.6% to 72.7%. So he has gone back up from C tier to B tier and that's over 44 rumors. And they did ding him, Apple Track did ding him for saying AirTags would be released at the event and they of course were not. But I remember him saying that they were ready to ship but he wasn't sure if they would ship. That is sort of a quantum state though. That's like trying to have your cake and eat it too. And I, I totally understand how this goes. You try to say what you're really certain of and what could happen but you're not certain of and what you don't think will happen. And you try to give everybody context for that but it makes it hard uh, on the other side to figure out what's an actual rumor claim and not just a long list of potential things. But Apple Track is counting it and these are the rumor rankings that I'm running with. Mac rumors went from 63.6% to 69% accurate, over 29 rumors, but they're still sticking at a solid C tier for these rankings. And they were dinged for third party custom voice synthesizers for Siri, which did not materialize in iOS 14, at least not so far, and for a bunch of messaging features that we didn't get like message retractions and mark as unread and status updates like slash me style status updates. And again, these could be features that were planned but not announced or never planned and thus never could be announced and we just don't know. So that sort of stuff counts against them. Up next, we have randomly accurate digitimes, which according to Apple Track went from 61 to 61.3%. So I guess an Apple Watch style incremental update there. Accurate over 62 rumors and they were dinged for the pricing on the new iPad Air, uh, which went up slightly and I think they said it would not go up. And now we have the people that actually went down, albeit again, just a little bit uh, this time. And that starts off with Love to Dream, who went from 89.2% accurate to 88.7% accurate over 47 rumors. And they were dinged for saying the Apple Watch would not arrive until October and Apple announced it and shipped it in September. And they sort of came back and said they were just doing that for the actors. I don't know if they meant they were just trolling, but that's, that's bizarre to me because this entire industry is based on credibility. And if you're willing to say things that can't be trusted uh, as some part of some weird cloud game on the internet, then that should ding your reputation regardless. Guomingji went from 76.6% down to 74.6% over 108 rumors, but I'm honestly not sure why. I didn't see anything that was clearly marked that he got wrong. So if you know, uh, let me know in the comments. But either way, it's a very, very small change. Doesn't even affect his solid B tier ranking. And maybe it was just a math error getting fixed. Next up, we have Maka Takara, the Big Mac, who went from 67.4% to 66.7%. And that is accurate over 48 rumors, but again, small change and they remain very solidly in the C tier. And very similarly to Love to Dream, they didn't think the Apple Watch was arriving until mid-October and it's already shipped now in mid-September. Economic Daily News went from 37.1% to 36.1% over 36 rumors. And they were dinged, but again, I'm not exactly sure why. It didn't look like any of their recent predictions had panned out yet, but they were a lot of iPhone stuff that's still pending. But they did say that at WWDC 2020, the one that happened this past June, we would get a game-centric, a uh, high-end game-centric Mac. And clearly we didn't. So you can just keep dinging them for a while as far as I'm concerned. And then we have this new raid boss in the arena, the one I teased before, and that's Kang, who nearly exploded, at least as far as Apple Track is concerned, just all over the S tier, going from 95 to 97.8% accuracy over 46 rumors. And Kang just seemed to nail everything. The only caveat is there are no sort of forward projections, no future projections, nothing about iPhone events or Apple Silicon Mac. Kang seems to show up at the last second, almost like they're looking at the supply chain as things come off the, uh, the assembly lines or go into the trucks or onto the containers, that sort of things, or just get added to systems and immediately pay off or don't pay off. And in Kang's case, they just 
all paid off right away. So that's where everybody is ranked after Apple's first fall event. But again, the big one, the iPhone 12 event is coming up. So uh, use these rankings to help weigh the rumors. Uh, you know, don't get too invested on it. This is not a cult of personality. You should not be arguing on behalf of any rumor reporter over any other one, certainly not fighting about it. They're there to provide entertainment to you, not to organize sort of tribal warfare on social media platforms. So take all of this stuff as fun, as like movie leaks, you know, things about the next Star Wars or the next Marvel movie. So either pay attention to them or just ignore them because you wanna be surprised. But by no means take them too seriously, which is exactly why I do things like uh, tier ranking. And for that, it's just math. Lucky for all of us, Brilliant's got a whole new math course library. So anyone, anyone can brush up on the fundamentals. Things like probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations, geometry, all the maths for school, for work, for fun, for figuring out tier ranking. Brilliant's a website and an app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and just so, so much more. There are no tests and no grades. Just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, who cares? It's no big deal. Just check out the explanation, learn more, and keep going. Go to brilliant.org slash Richie and sign up for free. Just click on the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash Richie and the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Now I've got videos, previews, unboxings, hands-on with all the new products coming this fall. Just hit the playlist right here. All the details on all the things. Just click on the playlist and I'll see you in the next video.